Ahoy Rovers! Well, in this episode, it's all about how I shaped the stem piece and attached it here. It's a little bit complicated, but nothing you really can't handle. Then, we're going to scarf the shear stringer. Very, very interesting stuff. Anyway, I've got a lot to do. Time to crack on. Well, Rovers, the first half of this video was filmed at my homestead, and to herald the day in, we have a flight of geese soaring overhead. All right, so now I'm going to start working on the stem piece, and I have this beautiful piece of 2x4, and I even marked it as stem because it's so nice and clear, and I brought it back from the boat shed with me, and then when I turned it over, yikes, there's a big knot, and the knot goes right through from the surface and that makes the usable bit of clear spruce here about an inch and a half shy of what I need. So on to plan B. So I have this other piece, it's a 2 by 6 and it's relatively clear. It has a few knots but they're all over on one side and I really only need about three and a half inches and it tapers down quite a bit. So this is what we'll use. So I'm working on the stem here and it's probably the most complex thing I've done so far on the boat because the stem, if you take a look at this, the stem is, this is the forward end, this is the after end, it tapers in and it tapers in at this angle right here and then at the bottom of the stem it's a different measurement altogether and you can see the angle changes. So the best way to develop this is by drawing out an actual lofting out the whole boat again. So up here I have the shear line marked, I have the angle of the bow, I have the water line and I have the actual bottom of where the bow uh, meets the bottom of the boat. So by drawing this out, I'm then able to take my uh, plan and I can lay this piece of wood on top of this angle because in the plan I get plumb measurements, but this is all at an angle. So then I can just mark, mark the shear right onto this angle, right there, and then on the other end, down here, I can mark the water line right onto here, and because this is at an angle, the water line goes right across on a level line, so I can pick it up on the opposite side of this piece of wood. So in fact, the angle, if you can see it, is like that. Anyway, now that I've marked it out, I can take a just a skill saw and cut along here. Now as long as I set the skill saw to this angle, so this is the angle at the bottom of the stem piece, then I can cut the entire length and then when I get to the top, this area with the hatching marks, that's the top of the stem, and it's a different angle. So you'll see there's the angle that the skill saw is set at. So this distance right here, that's just waste, and you'll have to knock that off with a hand plane.
Okay, so now we're going to install the stem piece. So you, earlier today I, I made it and it's, uh, it's an angle that changes over its length. But I also have drawn a center line right down the center. I have our laser level set up and you can just make out this um, line right here and it lines up with the rest of the frames. So it's a matter of getting this lined up with that laser just like you see it right now so just a tiny bit over at the top there we go that's perfect so now all i have to do is just put a couple of screws into it i've pre-drilled the stem so i don't end up with any cracking okay and we're good to go uh, it's moved a little at the top but that's no problem there we go. Perfect. Well, now that we've established that the center line of the stem is where it should be, the next thing we need to do is to establish that the water line as it is on frames lines up to where we've indicated the water line should be on the stem. And in fact, it is. So we're good to go. Everything is locked down. All right, so we're going to cut a scarf on this one by four that we just set up. So first thing is to get it into our jig. So I'll just have it go just a little beyond the edge of the jig. And I'll just set up our board, then it's a matter of putting our clamp on. The board nice and Everything's nice and tight there. Okay, now I'm just going to back the jig slowly to the starting point. The jig itself is tight against the fence. Hearing protection on. Now we're starting the saw. Ah, we need to plug the saw in. Now we need to turn on the saw. So there is the waste piece. Unclamp. And what we have is a nice bit of tapered 2x4 and you can imagine, or 1x4, actually 1x2, and you can just imagine the exact opposite angle being glued up and you'll end up with a long board. Anyway, Time to crack on with the other four. So here we have two complementary angles and that's what we're looking at. Nice. So 
So dry fit the joint, put a few pencil lines on it so that you'll be able to reline it when you uh, glue it up, and then drill a little hole and drive a little finishing nail through that hole. That'll keep the two joints from slipping open when you put a bit of pressure on them. All right, so we've got the epoxy all mixed up. Now I'll just put it on the surface. So it's really good to wet out the wood first because the wood will just suck it right up. So now I've mixed in the microfibers. It's looking kind of like that, a little bit heavier than ketchup. And we're going to put this on. Well, Rovers, I'd like to give you a little update right now on where we are with the building plans, some of the changes we've made. Anyway, here it goes. Well, one of the first things you're likely to notice is that the forward hatch has been removed. Now, this has been done to strengthen the cabin top for the anticipated stresses of an unstayed mast, especially in severe weather conditions. Now, the second thing you've probably noticed is that the keel has been streamlined from the original concept. Now, the original concept was really too likely to snag uh, potential fishing nets or other debris. Now, I'm also very pleased to show you an example of the detail that you will receive in the drawings. Now, in this particular uh, drawing, you'll notice that all the measurements are given in both metric and imperial, including the assembly weights given both in pounds and kilograms. Now, Andy is still working on the revisions and we're still on target to get the plans out by the 1st of November. Now, it's an honor to add a new name to the benefactor's bulkhead, Peter Antipas. Now, the names on the benefactor's bulkhead have made a donation of $100 US or more, and their names will be written on a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will travel with me on our solo circumnavigation. These funds are much appreciated. I'd also like to thank all of our patrons whose pledges of support help Sailing Wave Rover in so many ways. Thank you. Well, Rovers, in the next episode, I'll be taking a look at how that shear stringer turned out, the scarf joint on it, that is, and then we'll be working with it and then hopefully installing it. Now, there's also been a few comments about the music that I've chosen and uh, if I could update it. Well, just to let you know, I have sent a message out to Lady Gaga and to the Cold Play. Unfortunately, neither one of them has gotten back to me yet, so you are stuck with the same music selection that we've been using all along. But more importantly, Rovers, thanks for watching.